Now let's try to calculate the divergence of this vector function. And at this point in the book, we still haven't been introduced to the formula for divergence in spherical coordinates. So that's why I'm going to work in Cartesian coordinates. So first of all, let us try to express this in Cartesian coordinates. So r hat, that's just equal to xi plus yj plus zk divided by the magnitude x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So this is just the vector for whatever point you're in divided by its magnitude. And so you see that r squared is just x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So you see that this whole term here is going to be given by this expression. So for the formula for divergence, we know that it's equal to the partial derivative of the x component plus the partial derivative of the y component plus the partial derivative of the z component. And you see that the, the x, y, z components, they're pretty sort of symmetrical. They all share the same denominator. And for the x component, we have an x in the numerator. For the y component, we have a y in the numerator. And for the z component, we have a z in the numerator. So I'm just going to calculate this one term over here, and the result that we get is probably going to be transferable to these two terms as well. So just to save us a bit of effort, I'm just going to work on this term first. So what is the x component? So you see that it's equal to x divided by x squared plus y squared plus z squared, 3 over 2. And to calculate this, we're going to have to use the quotient rule. And the quotient rule tells us that First of all, we differentiate the numerator, which is equal to 1 in this case. And then we multiply it by the denominator. And then we differentiate the denominator. And in this case, we're going to have to use the chain rule. So after differentiating this, we have to differentiate the insides, which is equal to 2x. And then we multiply this term by the numerator, x. And then we take the square of the denominator. So in the numerator, I can pull out this term over here, and we're going to be left with x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus the 2's that cancel out, minus 3x squared. So x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the power of, to the power of 3. So uh, at this point, you see that this is the derivative of the x component. And then we have x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus 3x squared. And then here we have these other terms that involve x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And then by, uh, by symmetry, you know that something similar is going to happen for the y and z components. And the only thing that's going to differ is that for the y component, instead of minus 3x squared, we're going to have minus 3y squared. For the z component, it's going to be minus uh, 3z squared. And so by this logic, if we add up the three components that constitute the divergence. So first of all, we're going to keep these keep these terms over here. So these terms will appear in all three of these components. So let's just keep that first. So x squared plus y squared plus z squared, 5 over 2. So I did a bit of simplification. And then in the numerator, we're going to have three of these x squared plus y squared plus z squares. And then for the x component, we're going to have a minus 3x squared. For the y component, we have a minus 3y squared. And for the z component, we're going to have a minus 3z squared. And then you see that this cancels out perfectly. And so we come to the conclusion that the divergence is equal to zero. And this seems like, this seems simple enough, so this tells us that the divergence of this term is equal to zero. But this actually presents uh, some problems later on when you deal with the divergence theorem. And uh, you will get to that later on. And in order to get around the problems that come up with because this whole thing is equal to zero. So this result actually creates a bit of problem for us. And then uh, later on when that happens, we're going to find out there is actually a lot subtle way to treat this uh, divergence because there is something funny going on at the origin. As you see that when r is equal to 0 at the origin, this thing is pretty much undefined. So uh, in what we've done right now, this is the general case for uh, points that is not the origin. But once you deal with the divergence theorem, you'll find that there's something fishy about this result here. 
and then you have to consider what happens at, in the origin in order to reconcile your results.